Welcome to Book to Film Studies. My name is Don, and today we're looking at film adaptations of H.G. Wells' classic 1894 sci-fi novella, The Time Machine. This novella tells the story of an unnamed time traveler who builds a time machine to explore the future of the human race and doesn't find what he thought he'd find. It has been adapted for screen three times. But which is the most faithful to the original text? I've watched all three versions and scored them in terms of characters, elements, and plot points for faithfulness to the text. A document with the elements in each category can be found in a link in the description for this video. These versions include a 1960 version starring Rod Taylor, a 1978 made-for-TV version starring John Beck, and a 2002 version starring Guy Pearce, who makes his second appearance here at Book to Film after his turn as Ebenezer Scrooge in 2019's A Christmas Carol. Warning: Possible spoilers ahead. For characters, a point is awarded if the character appears. Since names are sometimes changed in versions, a character gets a point if they appear and it's supposed to be the one in the book. For example, the main character is named in the versions even though he's not named in the book. If there is a particularly interesting part of the character's description that should be included in a portrayal, I include that as a bonus point, such as Philby having red hair. There are 26 possible character points. For elements, points are awarded if an element is present, a future setting for example. Partial points can be given, for example, the type of material used in the future statue. There are 18 possible element points. For plot points, points are given if the plot point happens. Bonus points are given if a detail is present in the plot point, such as the wells discovered being rimmed with bronze. There are 30 possible plot point points. There are 74 possible regular points. Other bonus points may be given for anything not in the three main categories that shows an attention to detail to the book. As always, departures or creative licenses are not counted against any version. I'm not concerned with what's different from the book, but what is the same? Departures will be mentioned if it seems like it hurts a score, such as if a new scene takes time away from a book scene that could have been included. This is also not a list of my favorites or which I think is best, as I'll leave that up to you to decide, but which contains the most elements from the book. Comment below about which version you think is the most faithful, and then which is your favorite. Links to online videos of versions not readily available on home video can be found in the description below. Characters Our first character is the narrator of the novel, who is also a guest at the dinners provided by the main character. The narrator does not appear in any version. The time traveler, so named in the book, appears in all three versions, but in Taylor he is named George, in Beck he is named Neil Perry, and in Pierce he is named Alexander Hardigan. All three are scientists of some sort. Philby, a red-haired and argumentative friend of the Travelers, appears in Taylor and Pierce, though he isn't all that argumentative in either one. A psychologist is a dinner guest at both dinners, and doesn't appear fully in any version. Beck gets a partial point for the psychologist, as a character in that version sets the mini-time machine in motion as the psychologist does in the book. There is a very young man described in the book as having a cigar, but no other details. The Taylor version gets a partial point for this character, for including a character smoking a cigar, but he's not young. There is no character referred to or suggested as a provincial mayor in any version. A medical man or doctor appears only in Taylor, and in this version he is the one to send the mini-machine into time. An editor named Mr. Blank is at the first dinner, but doesn't appear in any version. A journalist, possibly named Mr. Dash, does not appear in any version. A shy, quiet man, whom the narrator states never says anything during the dinner, possibly named Mr. Chose, is described as having a beard, so Beck gets a partial point for one of the characters speaking to the Traveler having a beard, though he's not a shy or quiet man. Mrs. Watchett, the Traveler's housekeeper, appears in Taylor and Pierce, while Beck gets a partial point for the character appearing as the Traveler's secretary. The Eloy appear in various forms throughout the versions. They're supposed to be small, about four feet tall, and wear multicolored tunics with leather belts and sandals. No version shows them this small, but Taylor at least has them wearing different colored tunics. Beck has them in just white tunics, and Pierce's Eloy are cliff-dwelling people in skins and brown clothing. Likewise, the Morlocks appear in each version. In Taylor, they are close to the book description of small and ape-like, with white fur, large grayish red eyes, with hair on the head and down the back though not as small as suggested. Beck's Morlocks are tall, hairless, and wide-eyed, while Pierce's are larger, not as white, and not as hairy as described. But then, a Morlock leader says there are different castes to the society, and he appears almost human, with long, white hair and bluish skin. Weena, an Eloy the Traveler rescues, appears in each version, with Taylor and Beck depicting her in a white and gold type of figure in a tunic as in the book. In Pierce, she is dark-haired and not wearing the right type of tunic. 
the Traveler's Manservant, does not appear in any version. After all character points, Taylor leaves with 13.5 points, Pierce is in second with 7 points, and Beck is in third with 6.5 points. Elements the novella takes place in Victorian times. It was written in 1894 and is contemporaneous, while The Traveler mentions his 19th century clothes. The Taylor version starts on New Year's Eve 1899 in London, while Pierce takes place in January 1899 in New York, as he's a professor at Columbia. Beck takes place in modern times, which is late 1970s for a 1978 version. The initial dinner that opens the novel is on a Thursday evening. This does not happen in any version. The Taylor version starts on December 31st, 1899, which was a Sunday. The Beck version starts on a random Friday, and Pierce's version does not state the day. There is a miniature time machine in Taylor and Beck, and each version includes a full-size time machine, with Taylor and Pierce adhering to the description of it being made of nickel, ivory, rock crystal, quartz, and brass, with levers for control. Beck's machine is a futuristic triangular one that has a computer monitor and keyboard. There is narration in both Taylor and Beck. Each version shows time moving rapidly as the Traveler engages the machine, though in Beck, at a certain speed, it changes to just showing a space-like special effect with flashing lights, so partial point. The location of the time machine remains the same in Taylor and Pierce. In Beck, he somehow also travels in space, first to the Salem Witch Trials, and then the Old West. There is a large statue we learn is connected to the Morlocks in Taylor and Pierce, though neither is a white Sphinx-like statue. In Taylor, it is somewhat Sphinx-like, but not white while in Pierce, it's just a giant head. The time machine's levers are removable in both Taylor and Pierce, and both these versions also accurately depict the far future date as being the year 802,701. The future landscape is a garden in Taylor and Beck, though in Beck it's surrounded by a desert. Pierce's future is more of a jungle. The Eloy diet is entirely fruit in Taylor and Beck. It's not clear in Pierce they only eat fruit. The Traveler carries matches in Taylor and Beck. There is a green porcelain palace in the distance the Traveler is interested in, though no film version depicts this, nor does any version show in the future that the stars are different. Time is shown moving backwards as the Traveler returns to his own time, only in Taylor. The Traveler smokes a pipe while he recounts his story to his dinner guests, but no version shows this. After all element points, Taylor still leads with 19 points, Pierce holds on to second with 15 and a half points, and Beck remains in third with 13 points. Plot points. There is an initial discussion about time travel at the first dinner, only in Taylor. The mini time machine disappears in Taylor and Beck. There is supposed to be a dinner one week later. No version actually has this correct, but they get partial points. In Taylor, the dinner is five days later, in Beck, there is no dinner mention, though there is elapsed real time of over the weekend. And in Pierce, the Traveler invites Philby to dinner in a week to explain his recent erratic behavior. At the later dinner time period, the Traveler comes in disheveled in Taylor and Beck. Pierce does not return to his own time. The Traveler cleans up upon entering the second dinner and eats some meat before sitting back to tell his story. This does not happen in any version. In Taylor and Beck, he remains dirty and disheveled while telling his story, with Taylor eating and drinking, and in Beck telling his story in an office to his superiors. The Traveler moves forward through time slowly at first, and then more quickly in each version, though in Beck he continues slowly once he stops at a random time, so partial point. In the far future, the Traveler stops his machine suddenly while in a storm, and the machine tips over. The machine tips over only in Taylor, though there is no storm. The Eloy show up in each version, but none has them approaching the machine with the Traveler in it, so partial points all around. In Taylor, he finds the Eloy lounging by a river. In Beck, he chases a figure he sees after finding the machine disappeared, who is Weena. And in Pierce, he is taken from his machine by the Eloy to be tended to as he was knocked out en route. Only Taylor removes the machine's lever when he leaves. The Traveler tries to understand the Eloy language only in Pierce, though there it's after he's decided to stay in the future and some of the Eloy already speak English, or the Stone Tongue, rather than him trying to communicate with them upon arrival. The time machine disappears in each version, though in Pierce the Traveler doesn't realize it's been taken until it is brought in to where he's talking to the Morlock leader, so partial point. The Traveler discovers some sort of well in Taylor and Beck, though in Beck it's a tunnel rather than a well. The Traveler rescues Weena while the other Eloy just watch, only in Taylor. The Morlocks come out at night in each version. The Traveler goes down a well to try to find his machine, only in Taylor. 
In Beck, he goes through a tunnel he found, and in Pierce, he goes into a random opening in the ground, so partial points. The Traveler and Weena visit the Green Porcelain Palace in no version, though he is taken by an Eloy to what is sort of a museum in Taylor, and Weena takes him to a museum-type place in Beck, so partial points. In Pierce, he speaks to the library AI that has somehow survived, but it's not a museum, so no points. He figures out the Morlocks eat the Eloy in each version. No version includes the Traveler and Weena discovering the Green Porcelain Palace is a museum, nor is there a forest fire in any version. The Sphinx statue appears open only in Taylor, though the Traveler is attacked by Morlocks when he gets into his machine in both Taylor and Beck. Pierce has a fight with the Morlock leader, but he is the one who initiates it. Upon getting his machine back, the Traveler goes into the future. He does so in Taylor and Pierce, though in Taylor he realizes he's going into the future by accident and reverses to return to his own time, so partial point. Only in Pierce does he go millions of years into the future as depicted in the book, before returning to the Eloy time. The Traveler returns to his own time in Taylor and Beck, though the return trip is not shown in Beck, so partial point. The dinner guests don't believe his story in Taylor, while in Beck his superiors seem to believe him, but dismiss the machine as not profitable, so partial point. And no version shows the narrator character waiting for the Traveler to return when the Traveler goes off into the machine again. After all plot points, Taylor still leads with 47.5 points, with Beck overtaking Pierce by 1 point. Bonus points. Bonus points go to Taylor for having a plaque on the time machine indicating its creator was H. George Wells, a nod to the book's author, and to Pierce for having a library AI in the future reference both the book and the 1960 film version, though sadly not the 1978 version. After bonus points are figured in, Taylor comes out on top with 48.5 points, while Pierce edges out Beck by one point. Taylor's 1960 version garnered almost 66% of the possible points, a solid faithful score, while the other two averaged less than half of that score at about 31%, even though they had more screen time than the Taylor version. Pierce and Beck were hurt by multiple departures from the book that took time away from book scenes that could have been included, such as the motivating plot for Pierce to make a time machine for saving his fiancée from being killed, or Beck going into the past twice before heading into the future. All versions also lost out on many character points for simply not including the majority of dinner guests. Is there a version I missed you think is more faithful than any of these? Comment below and I'll check it out. Are there other book to film adaptations that should be scored for accuracy? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.